Uh, coaching two OVC wins, um, 90 plus points, uh, obviously in two very different ways. Do you feel like the offense is exactly where it needs to be or is there still, still more some fine tuning to do? No, I think just like all parts of our, our game and our attack, we have a lot of improvements to make. But I thought the high scoring numbers were a reflection of two monstrous defensive spurts. You know, a 17 minute stretch there in the Moorhead State game and then the final 18 minutes of the EKU game. I thought our defense really fueled uh, the offense. Uh, so, I, you know, pretty simple formula, but you know, just trying to get more and more consistent there. Uh, also, two in these two wins, 124 points in the paint. Um, it's crazy to think as good as your three point shooting has been over the last three or four years with different teams the paint play over the last two games has been subliminal, and you, you've commented on that. Where else do you think that this post can improve moving forward, though? Well, I think the points in the paint is not just post play. It's a combination of a lot of things. It's the, the forced turnovers that we had that led to some dunks in transition. I think it's dribble penetration from our guards. Uh, I think it's offensive rebounding. Uh, I think it's uh, in, in addition to the production from Darnell and KJ there in the paint. So, you know, basketball, pretty simple game. You know, more layups and dunks you can get, the better. Uh, so I think just continuing to have that balance uh, inside, outside, at every position is key for us. Tevin went 0 for 6 to start that game on Saturday, uh, but I felt like once he started getting going, the rest of the team got going as well. I know you said defense kind of led to that offensive spurt, but I felt like once he saw his shot go, the rest of the team did. How much uh, do you kind of put to Tevin once he gets in the rhythm of the team kind of follows? Yeah, I never really gave it any thought that he was 0 for 6. I, you know, We want him to shoot every open shot he can get. I uh, thought the first one he got was in transition. Ja found him running the wing, and he hit a big three. And we talked about it after the game. I thought the threes he hit there early in the second half uh, shifted the momentum of the game a little bit and, and got us going, uh, certainly at the defensive end. I thought our intensity picked up there. And we were just much better defensively the final 18 minutes of the game uh, versus the first 22. Can you talk about the confidence that he has in his shot, even though he, you know, goes for a spurt like that? But I mean, he's still trying. It. Oh, he he should have all the confidence in the world in his shot. He's he's an elite, elite shooter. And you know, the thing about it, and I, and I know I've said it before, but he he's a lot more for us than just a catch and shoot three point guy. He's been terrific defensively. Uh, he's been very good decision making wise, uh, taking care of the basketball, making the right play offensively. Uh, so I, he's been a very, very complete player for us, and you know, he, he should shoot with confidence any chance he gets. Um, you talked a little bit about it before the season even started, but you, you mentioned that Tevin had a, maybe a mediocre or tepid summer, you would call it. Where did the green light come on for him from a defensive standpoint? How did that change? Yeah, I mean, mediocre, maybe harsh. I, I, I thought, you know, just didn't have his – his best summer until about middle of July. And for whatever reason, you know, whether it's sit down talks or somebody, you know, a family member back home, for whatever reason, about mid July, he kicked it into another gear. He's really invested a lot of time. And I think just having that year under his belt really helped, you know, being in the system for a year, having the familiarity with the defensive principles, some of the things we like to do offensively. Uh, for whatever reason, it really clicked for him there about mid-July, and he, he's, he's been very, very productive ever since. KJ Williams, uh, freshman of the week this week, had a terrific week, and uh, I know there's still areas where you want to see him improve, but he is uh, he's really making big contributions inside. Yeah, very pleased with him, and I think he's just worked extremely hard, Neil. He's been coming in early in the mornings, putting in a lot of extra work. You see his finishing ability around the basket. He's been very good on the offensive glass. I thought Saturday night especially, he gave us a defensive presence at the rim. Had some big time block shots. And it's just played extremely hard. And he's brought a lot of energy to the team. I think you see there's a nice chemistry between him and Ja on some of the passes that he's able to find him on uh, for some baskets around the goal. So just very pleased with him. He's, he's, he's a joy to coach. Consistent, same same every day. 
And I think when you do those things, you have a chance to keep getting better and better. So sky's the limit for him moving forward, for sure. UT Martin is 0-2, but they could easily be 2-0 and uh, in conference play. What are you seeing from them looking film, getting ready for the team? Well, they're 5-0 and at home this year. Uh, they have great balance from a scoring standpoint. They have six guys who average double figures, uh, which I don't know if we've seen that all season long. Uh, six guys that are capable of putting up those type of numbers. Uh, so they've got weapons at every position. Uh, I think our ability to guard will, will certainly be tested on Thursday. With that many guys scoring, how does that affect your scout? Is it? I'm sure it's much more difficult when there's a lot more capable guys that can score. Yeah, you can't just key in on one or two players. Um, you know, you have to do the job on 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 every spot. And you know, all conference players like Fatad Lewis, uh, Preston Parks, who just became eligible, um, I guess maybe a month ago or so, but I averaged over 20 points a game at the Citadel a year ago. It was one of the top scorers in the country. So. Uh, they, they've got a lot of weapons. Uh, Little, the transfer from Colorado State, had some monster offensive nights. Uh, Dove, their front court players, plays with great energy, very athletic, finishes around the goal. Uh, I think they have a lot of talent, uh, a lot of talent offensively. You talk about KJ. You've got a guy in Shaq that's catching oops. Now it's KJ doing the same thing, kind of coming from the other side. Uh, hey. Is that a type of offense that they just kind of run like a backyard play, or is that something that you guys script up and draw for the U? Well, it's a combination of the two. Sometimes it's out of transition. Sometimes they're scripted plays or what have you. But, um, you know, it's just we, we've got an elite passer and playmaker uh, with the ball in his hands. And if you do the work defensively and we're able to get out in transition, create some advantage type situations there, the three on twos, two on ones, should be able to convert some easy easy shots around the basket. I think our guys did a really good job of capitalizing on those opportunities this past weekend. Well, a little bit about uh, Darnell Gord, too, in his uh, 29 minutes. Uh, I mean, his other stats didn't shock me, but the 29 minutes, I wouldn't have thought that would have been possible two months ago. Yeah, I told you after the game, Neil, there's a couple times he looked over asking for a sub, and all the coaches just turned their head and looked the other way and, and made him fight through it. Thought it was good for him. Uh, but he's, he's been so productive. You know, 18 points, seven and a half rebounds a game this past weekend. You know, I know Mayo scored a lot of points, and you know, what a player he is. But I thought Darnell's effort defensively in the second half was really, really good. I thought he competed at a high level. Mayo hit some tough shots, um, but but I thought Darnell really competed at that end of the floor, and I, I, that was what I was most pleased with uh, was his defensive effort on Saturday night. I know the approach doesn't change, but uh, talk about this. You have four straight road games coming up, and the schedule is kind of a, a tough part. Yeah, it's very challenging. You know, we had the same thing last year. I think every team in the league goes through that uh, with the new scheduling model. So. I think you, you said it best, Adam, the key to it is you just focus on the next game, uh, whether you're home, road, what have you. And as I always say, I know it's, it's very boring to sit in here and discuss, but all our guys need to worry about right now is, is getting better these next three days in practice and trying to find a way to win on the road at Martin on Thursday. And that's it. That's, 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 that's all we need to be worried about. Um, I know there's a lot of great players in this league, but will you face in your mind another guy like Mayo, like you guys said to deal with this past Saturday? Ed, I'll say this about Nick Mayo. I, I don't get to watch as many college games as I'd like because you get so locked in on your team and your preparation for the next game. But I try and flip the channel every night, and, and I'll ask you, I mean, how many guys do you see on TV that are 6'9", 250? and shoot the three, can score off the dribble, dominant inside. I just I hadn't seen a lot of players in all of college basketball that do the things that he can do. Uh, I, I just think he's a phenomenal player. He's put in a lot of time. You can see the, the, the strength gains that he made in the offseason. And I think Coach Hamilton's done a great job helping him max out as a player. So, you know, credit to both of them. But uh, he's, he's, he's a special player. There's no doubt about it. Um, we didn't see Daquan Smith on Saturday after seeing him a little bit earlier before. I, any sort of maybe discussion there as to maybe what the next step is for him? No, no discussion, discussion there. We're just game to game, trying to win the next game. And 
Uh, Saturday uh, was, I thought, uh, an incredible college basketball game. Atmosphere, atmosphere in here was off the charts. I thought EKU played incredibly well. They're, they're well coached. They play very hard, really competed at a high level. And our guys had to respond and do the same. And it was just one of those games where you're battling back from down as many as 12 for 30 minutes, uh, that it was just a short rotation for us uh, on Saturday. And we'll continue to evaluate playing time and, and so forth in practice this week. Um, is that a conversation that you end up having with the team? That uh, Obviously, EKU's had a great year, and they'll continue to have a great year. But you got their best shot. Um, is that something you tell this team or have to tell some of the new guys, hey, we're going to continue to get everybody's best shot week in and week out? I mean, there's only one way to play the game, Ed. It's to come out and, and play extremely hard, play with great toughness, play with unselfishness. It's not so much about the opponent. It's about how you prepare each week, you know, the consistency that we have in that, in that area. I love our team. I think they play with great energy, uh, great passion play with a lot of emotion. They play for each other. I uh, play with a lot of joy. I think it's fun to watch. It's definitely fun to coach. Um, but I knew EKU was going to come out and play well Saturday, uh, you know, doing their scout. They play hard. They press you for 40 minutes. And for whatever reason, number one, give a lot of credit to Austin P. But Austin P. on Thursday night just outplayed them. And EKU didn't look like themselves. So we knew they were going to come in here ready to go. And uh, you know, I thought it was a great game. I was, I was proud of the way our guys just stayed the course. We were down 12, and it was a high possession game. I mean, there's, eight, I believe, 84 possessions in the game. So I just wanted to stay the course, keep tried to string together some stops, and, and our guys did a great job of that.